Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to share with you how I made this spell casting cauldron from Dollar Tree Materials for around $20. If you're new here, welcome. Stick around by hitting that subscribe button and ringing the bell for notifications so you never miss out on a Halloween video. All right, let's get into the DIY. I was inspired to make this cauldron from the animated spell casting cauldron by Brandon Road. It was $179 and I thought I could challenge myself and make one from Dollar Tree materials. So the first thing I needed to do was make a cauldron because Dollar Tree doesn't sell cauldrons big enough. So I'm going to use this little laundry basket with a handle and I'm just going to remove the handle. Now I need to make the sides of my laundry basket come out a little bit more to give it that cauldron look. So I'm going to use two of these black foam boards from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut out half circles. I cut out 26 half circles and I try to put them as close together as possible so that that way uh, I was using the most out of the foam board and not wasting it. So I went ahead and cut one out that I liked and made sure I measured it to make sure it was the right height and size I needed. And then I used that one to trace out the other 25 that I needed to cut out. Now, you could also use just regular cardboard for this if you had some old boxes lying around and then that would make this project even less of a cost for you. Uh, I just didn't have any lying around this time. Making this cauldron is not my original idea. I did find this idea on how to make a cauldron from a basket or a bucket on Pinterest. So now that I have all 26 pieces of my foam board cut out, I am going to hot glue them around my basket. So I'm just using the lines on my basket as a guide and I'm just putting the hot glue on the lines and then putting my piece of foam board on top of that and then just doing that all the way around the basket until it is completely full with the pieces of foam and this is just going to bump out my basket just to give it that fuller effect so that it looks more like a cauldron in the long run next i need to cover up all of the gaps so i'm going to use some black duct tape from dollar tree for this now i probably was a little heavy-handed with the duct tape on this i used five rolls i think you could definitely get away with probably three or four um i just decided to just go all out and try to cover every single gap really what i needed to do was just cover um, the majority of it and then I ended up coming back around and taping it a different way so that that way it had a more of a finished look to it. So I'm just taping around the bottom and then I'm taping around the side and then I came back and taped around the top and then I just covered it all in tape and then once it was all covered and there were no gaps showing I came back with more of the tape and I went from top to bottom with the tape. So I would just do a line, um, I would just start at the top and put my uh, duct tape down and then I would take it to the bottom and then cut it off and then come back around for the more finished look. So like I said, I didn't need to cover it so much probably in the beginning since I was coming back to do this. I just needed to fill the major gaps so that way the finished look had something to stick to uh, in the end. So after I got all of the basket covered with the duct tape, I took some black spray paint and I went in and I spray painted the basket and then I also spray painted the outside with the black because it was a matte black spray paint and I didn't like the shininess of the duct tape. So then once that was dry, I took the rest of the foam board that I had left and I traced a circle out and I cut that out with my box cutter and then I used that as a false bottom for my cauldron. So I made a false bottom for my cauldron because I didn't want to see the basket material inside of the cauldron when you looked kind of down in it and I wanted it to look more like a cauldron. So 
That is why I did that. To attach the false bottom, I took a paper towel roll and I cut that in half and glued that to the bottom of the basket. And then I glued the false bottom to the paper towel roll and then just reinforced it uh, with some glue around the sides. And then you can see here, I am painting the cauldron once again. I wanted some more texture, so I mixed some paint with some baking soda and painted it with that. And then when the paint was tacky, I poured some baking soda on top and dusted that off and also poured some cinnamon to make it look like rust. And I think the baking soda and the cinnamon gave it more of a rustic look and more of texture, so that way it looked like more of a cauldron. All right, so the cauldron is finished. You could use this for anything you wanted, um, but I'm gonna go the step further and make it the spell casting cauldron. So this is the hard part. Uh, so I needed a tube. So I took one of these long bubble wands from Dollar Tree. I just poured the bubbles out and took the cap off. And you can see here, I am playing with the tube to figure out how I'm gonna attach it to the cauldron and also how I'm going to attach it to my bottle that's gonna be pouring out. So I'm kind of bent it at the top one way and then bent it at the bottom the other way in like a Z formation, I guess. Um, and I was looking to do something like that, um, but I wasn't really sure how it was gonna work out. Also wasn't sure if it was gonna be tall enough if I bent it at the bottom. So I ended up getting my wood burning tool out and I am just gonna burn off the top of the bottle where the top screws into it because I don't want that sticking out. Uh, and I'm actually going to burn off the bottom, just the very bottom of the bottle so that way it sits flat. Now when you're burning plastic, you wanna make sure you do this in a well ventilated area and with a mask because you are burning plastic, so be safe as safe as you can be. Um, and then now that that's burnt off, I'm gonna attach this just straight up and down and I'm gonna use some hot glue. Now I use a ton of hot glue and this took a lot of patience. So I put my first layer of hot glue down um, and then I kind of sat there and let it dry a little bit and then I put a second layer of hot glue as you can see here with like little feet coming out and I sat there and held it for a really long time and then I actually put a third and fourth layer of hot glue on and held it just until it was dry and you can see it stayed really well. So since that was done, the next uh, thing I needed to do was attach my bottle. Um, so I'm just gonna use a mason jar from Dollar Tree. Uh, that was the closest thing I could find that looked kind of um, like for spells and things like that. But I wanted it to have a green tent so I just brushed it with some green paint and then wiped it off just to have the tent. But you could definitely pour the green paint inside, swirl it around, let it uh, pour out and then bake it in the oven and then you would have a green tent as well. I just didn't have time to do that. Um, so now I'm gonna stuff my tube with some battery operated orange lights from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna attach my bottle to my tube. So you can see here, I bent my tube, and since I pre-bent my tube before I attached it, it was easier to bend, but I did use the blow dryer to heat it up a little bit just to make it more pliable. And then again, with the hot glue, I used a ton, and this one took a lot more patience than the other one to hold. I held this for probably about 15 to 20 minutes and kept reapplying hot glue as I was waiting for each layer to dry so that that way this would hold. I was really skeptical and I wasn't thinking that this was gonna hold. I was just trying to be patient, but I turned on a show and just held it there, make sure I held it steady so that that way I wasn't moving it around and held it really taut to the glue. Uh, so that way it wasn't falling as well. And eventually with a little bit of effort, it did work out, thankfully. And um, you can see here, I'm still holding it because I'm really nervous to let it go. And as I'm holding it though, I am melting some glue as some drips down the uh, tube so that that way it looks more realistic. Um, so I'm just dripping the glue down and then I'm doing it in layers so that that way the drips look more realistic. 
After I got the hot glue drips done, I felt confident enough to let go of the bottle. You will see here in a second. And I was so happy it stayed. You can't see in the background, but I am doing a happy dance there because I was so worried it wasn't gonna stay, but it did, it worked out great. So now the hard part is over. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and glue the battery pack down. Um, it doesn't fit, like this cord isn't long enough to go outside of the cauldron, so I left it on the inside. And then I put in another string of lights on the bottom and glued that down. Now, the way I glued it, you can easily turn it on and off, but I don't know how you're gonna change the batteries. I'm not really, I didn't think that far ahead. I probably shouldn't have glued them down and it would have been easier to change the batteries. But either way, uh, I'm just gonna move along and it'll be fine. That's a later me problem. Um, so I need to cover up that top there. So I got some of this shrink wrap from Dollar Tree that's like the window film and I cut a piece off and I used the tape that comes with it and taped it down and then tried to shrink wrap it. It didn't give me as much of a uh, tight, nice fit as I would have liked it. So I kind of, I don't know if you need this or not, but I left it on um, and I just worked around it because I'm gonna go ahead and cover that up and I'm gonna use one of the like clear bubble mats that you get in the back section at Dollar Tree and it looks like bubbles. So I've used this on a cauldron a long time ago when uh, I made the witch's feet coming out of the cauldron and these were the bubbles for uh, that DIY so I thought this would work perfect for this one so I just cut around like the center where it was gonna fit so that that way I could slide my tube in it and then I just hot glued the little bubbles around the sides and cut off the excess mat so that way it wasn't hanging off I think it would be really cute if these were painted green so it kind of matched the tube, but I didn't think that about that until later on, unfortunately. And then I did add a few more layers of drips onto the bubble bubble mat, so that way uh, it kind of all molded together. You could definitely be done with your cauldron right here, but I took a step back and I realized that my cauldron needed some feet, so I used these little uh, skull head candy jars that I got from Dollar Tree last year. I just removed the little handles off of them and then applied some hot glue to the top and just put my cauldron on top of that. And I also painted them with that same black and baking soda mixture. And then I also added some handles that were actually shower curtain rings. I hot glued those to the sides and painted that with that same black paint mixture. I love how this turned out. I think this is one of my favorite Halloween Dollar Tree DIYs that I've done so far. And I just added that little poison label that I think just finishes it off nicely. I printed that out with my Cricut, um, but you could use a sticker or whatever you can find. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.